I just saved hundreds of dollars by switching to Geico. I feel like I'm on top of the world. Disclaimer, you will not be transported to the top of the world. In the unlikely event you find yourself at the Arctic Circle, seek shelter from the elements immediately to avoid frostbite and or hypothermia. Geico will not be responsible if you find yourself in a cave or crevasse with a lonely abominable snowman, who in all likelihood will force you to play games including but not limited to Go Fish, Charades, Chinese Checkers, or his personal favorite, Red Rover, Red Rover, send Yeti on over. Geico is not liable for any damages, either physical or emotional. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. And now... Jalen and Jacoby on ESPN Radio. When I pop the trunk, head to dead. Y'all pop the trunk, I pop the hood. Now act stupid, I'll pop the trunk. Now give me your po-po, po-po. He is Jalen versus everybody. What up now? I'm David Jacoby. And on the cool check-in. Center stage on the mic. And we're putting it on wax. New We're Jalen Jacoby on ESPN2, usually at 2 p.m. when the Australian Open isn't happening. What do we do? S- since we on IG Live especially, we got to be live! What they want. A strong effort from you, Jalen Rose. You're fired up today. We've been off. We haven't had a pod since last Friday. A lot has happened. We know our Super Bowl matchup. The Cavs have completely fallen apart. Everyone's blaming Kevin Love. You're going viral talking about Kawhi Leonard on first take. Dame Lillard's having meetings with the owners. This, All of this is happening, but this is Jalen and Jacoby. And this is a podcast. We're going to talk about all those big stories, but we got to start with Montrez Harrell. We do. Yep. Socially awkward. It got real socially awkward for Montrez. Yep. Trez. He's been playing, too. He's been playing lately. Monty. <laughs> Mr. Harrell. Mr. Harrell. So, I got this from Black Sports Online. That's that's a site that I check a lot, especially for topics for the show. Shout out to Robert Child. Shout, 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 shout to them. Shout out. Here's the story, if you didn't see it. Jalen, you have, have uh, brought a term into my life called imports. <laughs> now, now, I thought you were going to say something the, in the, the dictionary. No, 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 no. This is the dictionary. But before, I always thought about imports as imported goods, or you know what I mean, sort of like you know the old New York harbors and, and boats, sailboats pulling up and unloading things on the dock. And it's not a sexist term; it works both ways. It sure does work both ways. But you have have introduced an alternate meaning, and what's that? Explain. An import, basically, and again, in an NBA player context, correct. It's basically you're flying somebody to come kick it with you while you're on the road. Exactly. However, Montrez imported into his hometown. Now, that's one mistake right there. Correct. And that's why we're going to get into that when we tell the story. I just saw the light bulb go on in your head. Import, explanation, (laughs) now I see what he did wrong. Please continue. Exactly. So, you defined it as when NBA players fly someone in while they're on the road. Let's say if you're in a city like Sacramento, you don't have any friends there, but you do have a friend in a city like, oh, I don't know, Los Angeles. You fly them up, you buy the ticket, and then you guys kick it in the hotel. And the guys that don't get imports in that city, here's what they do. They just tweet her IG. Hey, Sack, what's going on tonight? What's going down, Sack Town? Where should I go have dinner? <laughs> exactly. Where the party at? So, Montrez, Mr. Harrell, Trez, he had a young lady uh, fly into Los Angeles to spend some quality time with him. Uh, little did he know that this young lady was, was, a, was an extrovert on social media. She shared every moment of the trip. Like, she's a travel blogger. You know, like she put effort into this. Like, she documented this vacation. Here's my, me packing my bags. Here's me getting on the plane. Here's me landing. Here's the car. Here's the house. Here's me in the mirror. Here's me in the bathroom. And it just, some people just couldn't help but notice that that was uh, Mr. Harold's house. Some people like his ex-girlfriend. What? And now, was that his girlfriend now his ex? I don't believe so. Got I don't it. believe so. I'm not so I'm not I don't have the intricate details as to, as to the, the latest status of their relationship. Okay. But what I do know is that Montrez tweeted, that's why I'm so low dolo. What? It's a lot of uh, a lot to unpack. And young people gather around a campfire and rub your hands together. It's the middle of winter on the East Coast. And in the Midwest, I have some jewels I need to spit. Oh, please do, Mr. Rose. This is exciting. Some game I need to give. And we putting it on wax. Oh, man. Initially, while the reason why it's called an import, because I don't know you well enough to take you home. 
Mm. Okay. So therefore, you're having that person that he met online that a lot of people clearly do in 2008. This is a DM situation. Yeah. You have them meet you at the hotel so that therefore everything's out for the general public. It's not your personal private information. Like his your car. license plate. Your car. Like his room. <laughs> his bed. His sheets. So now she's just saying, oh, I'm at the Ritz Carlton. Yes. Number one. Number two. The person that you decide to import, you should probably follow up with them since you met them on social media and see what they're posting. There should be a little bit of vetting. A li- you could do a little bit of vetting. Just yeah. to, you know what I mean? We've all done it with everyone that we've met. Just seeing their social accounts. Yeah. Just see what they're how they present themselves. Not who they are, but how they present themselves to be and how often they share and what they share. Next. You clearly understand that she's active on social media. Very active. This young lady is very active on social media. So you mean to tell me from the time y'all set up the trip to the time she went home, you didn't check her page? Hmm. That's an interesting angle I didn't think about. Because instead of taking... Someone tells me he didn't. ...sexual suggestive pictures in the bed, I would have been like, you need to be taking those down. There was some pictures where she... Either she used the timer, and anyone who's done that knows how hard that is, but I haven't put that much time and effort into it. Either she used the timer or someone else took them. That's someone else you would assume would be Montrez himself. Oh, and by the way, and what happens is you do it with her phone. She forwarded it to him. Then he's happy. And then she posts it. Exactly. From her phone. From his bed. And also, but Montrez didn't really, I don't want to kill the guy. He didn't do too much wrong. He didn't. He's, I assume that he's single. He's so low. He's just enjoying himself and with the lastly, company of others. Here's the most important. Exploring relationships. But here's the most important point that I want to give an exclamation to. Being single doesn't solve this. No. Nope. Being in a relationship solves this. Oh, explain. Because the person that you're in a relationship with is someone that you care about, someone that you trust in your private, in, in the privacy of your own home. When you're single, this can't continue to happen over and over again. Well, listen, you know I'm a relationship dude. I've been with the same lady for so long. I, I, I swear, if I was single for the last 15 years, I probably would have been fired six times by now. Sued. Who knows? She keeps me in line. Big shout, however, to Montrez, because the one thing we can't say... Is that he didn't behave like a gentleman? Because yeah. she had a great time. Yeah, she had a great, he did everything. He didn't do anything wrong, and it was kind of funny. I thought the tweet was kind of funny. He's like, "I saw this whole thing blow up in my face. People are talking about me online." You know what I'm gonna say? Just a little, just a little, little wink, wink. That's why I'm solo dolo. I got to give you another wink, wink. What's that? He's just playing well lately. How too. you save some coin, by the way? Who does he play for? Los Angeles Clippers. What city do they play in again? Los Angeles proper. <laughs> What cities did you use an example for when you talked Sacramento. about importing? Why would you think somebody would import to Sacramento versus Los Angeles, though he lives here? Ah, Volume. Volume, yes. Yeah, exactly. Volume is a good way of putting it. Okay. Volume. So my suggestion for him is you balling now in L.A. All you got to do is come outside. <laughs> yes. And also, you're not like, <clears throat> how, do I, how do I explain it? Like Darren Collison. Darren Collison walks around and he, he, he can blend in with the general population. Montrez, you're gigantic. You know what I mean? You're six ten. You're three hundred pounds. And this is what I love about this program. Shout to Darren Collison, one of my young boys, Shout who out. I just saw when he was in Los Angeles because he plays for the Pacers. Hmm. He blends in. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> he blends in. <laughs> I love these kind of stories. Me too. But this is so different. Like the social uh, in in the years past, I mean, you don't have to be old man Jalen here. None of this was on the board. Maybe she would tell some friends. You deny it later. What do we call this segment? Socially awkward. Things get awkward. Things get awkward. But at least Montrez handled himself like a gentleman. Clearly, yes. because she had an amazing time. She did. She de- she documented the trip with a fervor. With with she, I mean, she really documented this trip in a way that I have never done before. She she so showed a level of enthusiasm, in detail that in her heart 
would warrant a second trip until he sees what she posted, delete. Block. Block. Oh, well. Shout to them, though. Just young people exploring relationships. We support power couples. They were, we do they support. Were, they were working on I it. I support romantic relationships. Good for them. Have fun. Here's, here's the thing that I want to suggest. And this goes for men and women alike. When you're doing that, there has to be other people in your life that care about you and or vice versa, like your parents, your aunts and uncles Someone's and cousins. Disappointed. Like 10 people are disappointed. Like 10 people are disappointed. Because that's not your woman or that's not your man. And we clearly saw that you went for what seemed to be, since you showed us the ticket, a one night stand. There's got to be an auntie or a cousin or a homegirl or someone who's just like Montrez. Like, let me let me just pull your coat to something here, and also pull her coat to something. Like, she was a little enthusiastic when she got to the house. Yes, yeah. And and, and, and when you show that level of excitement. It lets me know that that was part of the reason why she was there as well. A lot of people want to share their accomplishments on social media. A lot of people want to paint a picture that's prettier than real life. They want things to seem like, look at my accomplishments, look what I've achieved, right? Having an NBA player fly you in, I don't know if that's even worthy of celebration. You know what I mean? You don't get a medal of honor for that. You don't get a trophy. set a little higher than that. You know what I mean? Like the goals, the bar shouldn't be that low. Like, look at what I've done, world. Go me, I believe was a quote that I saw. Like go like let's set the bar a little bit higher. That's all. I'm not asking for much. This is why I love doing the podcast days because we could never have this 15 minute conversation about Montrez Harrell on the TV show. It's socially awkward. Harlito, what do people think? There's, how many people are watching? Ten. A hundred. Oh, triple digits. Triple digits. So make sure you follow Jalen and Jacoby and follow Jalen versus everybody on IG. I think we have to talk about real basketball topics now, Jalen. What? Mike Golick here. You know, ADT, the number one security company, can now help keep you safe at home and when you're on the go. Get started with the ADT Starter Kit professionally installed for only $49. Plus, you'll get ADT Go, the new family mobile safety app and service with 24-7 emergency response for free with any ADT security system. Go to ADT.com slash podcast to learn more today. Requires 36-month monitoring contract, QSP, and easy pay. Activation and early termination fees may apply. Certain markets excluded. Licenses available at ADT.com. Additional charge for ADT Go premium services after March 31st, 2018. The Cavs played the Spurs last night. The Spurs were without Kawhi. We'll get to that. They were also without Powell. Without Manu. They are playing the Cavs pretty much at full strength. What? And it, I think there was one point where they got within six in like the top start of the fourth quarter. But it never really felt in jeopardy. It never really felt close. You look at the Cavs roster. You look at the Spurs roster. It shouldn't be like this. The Cavs have now lost six of seven. They're having meetings where they're blaming Kevin Love for faking illnesses like Ferris Bueller. What is happening? A couple of things. I want to come to the defense of one Kevin Love. I've seen multiple images of him falling on the ground and a, a separate teammate walking by him, walking over him, not helping him up. It was Crowder, and in his defense, he had to get the ball to take it out of bounds. It's not a, such a rush to take it the is. ball out where you step over me. You remember what happened when LeBron tried to step over Draymond? That's just something you don't do. I've watched this, and I think people are making a bigger deal of this than there needs to be. So you're saying that was a violation of, of, of teammate code on behalf of Jay Crowder. I'm, I'm going to keep it real simple for you. Would you have done that to me? Maybe. Well, you think it too long. I wouldn't have done that to you. I'd have helped you up. In the middle of a game, what if we're trying to up the pace with every the coach said the last time out? Listen, they get a bucket. We need we need to out. We need to get out. And get running. If that was the if that was the case, then I would then I would say you know what I would normally help up Mr. Rose here, but I'm following instructions of the game plan. He's a grown man. He's one of the best athletes in the world. He can get from a seated position by himself. This whole like you know, oh I don't pick up teammates. Oh we people You're running wrong. running over and across the help You're teammates. Wrong. I'm just saying, You're you guys are grown. You're, You're some wrong. of the best athletes in the world. I've You're seen wrong. you jump up in the jail, and I've seen you do some the athletic things in the world, and you're like 49 years old. You're wrong. Like, you can get up off the ground by yourself. You don't need help. You're wrong. You don't need help. Because this is the difference between successful teams and teams that struggle. Yeah. The teams, like I say, when you make a mistake, it's my bad on a good one. It becomes an argument on a bad one. When you're in unison with your squad... 
you help them up. And by the way, there? if you would have walked over me and talked about the coach said anything, I would have tripped you. What if, what if I throw you like a like a verbal cue that lets you know, like, I got you, I love you, but we're going to move on with this play right now? You can't move on to play without Kevin Love because the last time I checked, besides LeBron, he's the only one balling. So if we got something we need to do on the other end of the floor, I need to make sure he's up off of it. Okay. Number one. Number two. For love, big game, ABC, team's been struggling. If you could breathe, you have to play. Oh, for the, the Oklahoma City game? And let me, this tell, is interesting. let me tell you my standard again. Okay. If you can breathe and you can walk and run, you got to get out there. All right, let me just let me, let me go the other way just for a second. I normally don't get ill. Like, I haven't gotten sick in years until I said that on this podcast and then there was a Sunday where I, 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 I emailed you and Harlan being like I don't know if I can work tomorrow like I couldn't get out of bed I couldn't move I couldn't handle my kids I couldn't change diapers I couldn't put good, put apple juice in a glass for them I was just lying in bed I couldn't move if I was a professional basketball player in that state I'd be like I'm not helping you by playing I'm ill right now I cannot play so what's wrong with that as long as you're not getting the rest of us sick and don't leave out the part that he's their second best player and they've been struggling. They need him. That's why you get out there. And play or just don't leave the arena? Because I can see that if, if, if I'm hurting you by being out there. I'm glad we're going live. Jacoby is more. We're in a dark alley. Okay. We see a foe that we're not going to be able to take down. Me and you? Correct. That's a, that's a, that's a big foe. Right or multiple foes. It's a lot of foes. We we that we know we ain't gonna be able to take them down unless we have some weapons. That's Nick foes. Okay. You can't still run off and leave me to get beat up by myself. I can't. You got to stand there and take a pound and also. What if I send you a really nice text later? No, we won't be friends anymore. Oh really? And that is the analogy I want to use with this. They needed him in the fight. Yeah. And if you can sit on the sideline. You can stand on the court. Yeah, yeah. It was only he left the arena. Two feet away. He left. He went home. And then here's the second part. Guess where you're going to get better treatment than at home? That's In a good the point. arena where That's there's doctors. Point. That's a good point, Jalen. Because you've got the whole medical staff. You get an IV. What do they always say? Fluids and rest. That's what they always say when you get sick. Fluids and rest. You could get an IV by the staff. We don't know that he didn't, but he probably didn't because he left. And so... That's what I'll, that's the only thing I'll say for his part. But lastly, when you have a team meeting, this was what happened that was unique. It's usually the players complaining about one another, putting each other in check, which all families, all mm-hmm. friendships, all sure. teams do. Yeah. And then the next part is once we iron our differences out, we complain about the coaches and the, and the management and the organization. Yeah. That's how we end the meeting. This was unique because... Coaches and management were in there with the players. Guess what should not be happening? Us knowing about it. Yes, that's a good point. I was about to say, before the meeting is over, someone says, this stays in this room. Someone says that. for individuals to be talking in the microphone about it is almost sharing pillow talk. We should know that, and this was said by LeBron, that they got killed by the second team in a scrimmage. That's sending a message that he doesn't like the starting squad and he hopes that it gets changed. Mm-hmm. And also, if let's say the meeting was 100 minutes, right? If you listen to the media reports on the meeting, it, it sounds like 85 of those minutes were people just yelling at Kevin Love. Whereas I am sure that Kevin Love was brought up. I mean, and perhaps, you know, if it was reported by Woj, I'm sure that perhaps Bomb. IT and others did question Kevin Love's illness or his, his moves that he made during that day. But I'm sure a lot of other things were brought to the table. I'm sure a lot of other things. There's a lot of other complaints. And it's clearly a team that's in disarray. The way we look at this squad, they would not currently win the Eastern Conference. I'm not so sure. They desperately need to make a move. If they're going to win the conference, is the stance I'm at now. They're nowhere in the stratosphere of the Houston Rockets or the Golden State Warriors if they were to limp through the Eastern Conference playoffs. And the reason why a lot of the talk centers around Mr. Love Take it from somebody that's been traded multiple times. He's the only one that got real value besides LeBron. Well, what do you think about 
Shump and Fry for George Hill. No. That's what's being reported. That's, That's what's gonna being happen. Out there. That would be good for the Cavs, but like I don't know if you're the Kings. You're like I get a Mon Shumpert. We know what his strengths and weaknesses are. Like it's not like he's going to develop with a lot into of something injuries now. lately. Yeah, like it's not, but it's also like not like he's going to develop into a player that he's not right now. And then you get Channing Fry, who's in the back half of his career, is a very limited skill set. I don't really understand if you're the Kings why you're motivated to make that move. Unless it's for salary implications, I agree with yeah, you on that. Dump Fry, maybe. And so while we're talking about that game. Let's talk about the elephant in the room. Because there's another team on the floor, as you mentioned, the San Antonio about, Spurs. You're talking about Kawhi and the Spurs? Sure. For those that weren't following the program, when I was doing my groundhog type thing that I do in this industry. What's happening now? And I started hearing whispers about what was going on. You're going to hear rumblings that Kawhi Leonard is unhappy to in San Antonio. Else, what? It's breaking news. To Jalen and Jacoby listeners, it's broken news. So that would constitute as broken news. And that probably was, what, seven or ten days ago? It was a week, yeah. And at the end of that, I, because everybody knows how much I respect and love the Spurs. Nobody, probably except Michelle Beadle, that works in the National Meadle, has said, Go Spurs, go! More than me. Sure. We even have it on the board. And so after sourcing it a little bit further, I realized that they're not necessarily seeing eye to eye about how his injury was handled and what is going to be the cure going forward if they're going to pole vault themselves into not only the excellence that they've already established with their five championships, but clearly, if they're going to be able to compete against the Golden State Warriors, though, by the way, they was winning by 20 before Kawhi got injured. In game one, but let's not act like that would be the whole series. The true end game for an amazing franchise, R.C. Buford, arguably the best in the game. Kirk Goldsberry. Coach Popovich, arguably the greatest of all time. Kirk Goldsberry. Kawhi, who I consider the top three player. Kirk Goldsberry. It's like he's going to need some help. And what frustrates me as a fan of theirs is we always talk about where these elite level free agents are going to end up. Where's Chris Paul going to go? Where's Paul George going to go? What about LeBron this summer? So my basic challenge for those players in the league why nobody talking about going to run with Kawhi in San Antonio if it's all about winning chips? I mean, LaMarcus went, I guess. But if there was a little bit of talk about Chris Paul, there was a little bit. But I think that was more speculation than reality of him going there. And so when I say I'm hearing, people kind of left that part out when it went viral. I'm hearing that he may want his way out. It does not suggest that tomorrow he's going to go in the room and bang on the door and say, trade me. No. What it says is it'll be interesting to see if and when, because this is when the proof is actually in the pudding, he's going to sign his extension or not. Mm -hmm. And you look at the team and, you know, Tony Parker's on his way out. Manu's on his way out. And that generation is gone. They invested a lot of money in Aldrich and Gasol yep. up yep. front. And the G- Gasol got a new deal. And if you're Kawhi, you're looking at it, you're like, is it me and Patty Mills and Danny Green and, and Kyle Anderson? And so that doesn't become an issue. I'm challenging and encouraging NBA players that aren't happy with their current situation. If it's really about winning, and I use this quote, opportunity is normally lost because it's dressed in overalls and it looks like work. I got that from you. I want to explain that for a second. It makes me so proud to see you on national television in big spotlights using those lines. But one thing I love about that line, it makes me smiley inside every time, is I got that from a children's book I read to Quincy. And the quote is from Pete the Cat. And I'm sure he got it from somewhere else. You know what I mean? Whoever writes Pete the Cat. But it says, opportunity knocks, but it often is dressed in overalls and looks like work. 
It's a great job by you. You made that one really work. You made that really work. And I'm glad it goes back to a children's book, but continue. And so hopefully it doesn't come to a point where I live in a world where Kawhi Leonard isn't a member of the Spurs and he's out here chasing teams. I don't want to see that for him. I'm pretty sure he doesn't want to see it for himself. No. But the Spurs are in a unique spot, unlike when they had David Robinson, Tim Duncan. They were able to usher David out as Tim came into his prime. Then before you know it, Tony and Manu came into their prime. Well, at the end of their prime, Kawhi became an elite level player, and now they're all older. I think that people, because of Kawhi's personality, sort of treat him like he is a robot. Like, he's not Draymond Green. He's not going to let you know how he's feeling all the time. But if you put yourself in his shoes, is he is an elite, elite athlete. He wants to win. He wants to play. Like, that is sort of like the fuel that feeds him. The third person in the history of the league to win Defensive Player of the Year mm-hmm. and Finals MVP. That's and You have to be competitive to push yourself. You have to be kind of crazy. You have to be dedicated to basketball. And what you want to do is play basketball. And you look at sort of the Blake Griffin rehab with the quad injury in the hand. You look at Markel Fultz with the shoulder. And now you're looking at Kawhi Leonard. Isaiah Thomas with the hip. Yeah, and, I, and Kawhi Leonard is sitting here being like, I'm trying to play. And I trust these people to put me on the path to play. And they say, you can play. And then I go out and play. And now I'm re-injured. And I lose trust in those people. And you know who those people's, what logo is on the checks that pay them? The Big Spur. And so there's going to be some mistrust there because his desire to play. And it feels in his mind that the decisions being made by the franchise are holding him back from doing that. So we'll see how it plays out. But again, I hope to never live in a world where Kawhi is in a spur being coached by Pop. So we're going to end the IG Live story. Make sure you follow Jalen and Jacoby and follow Jacoby Juice and, of course, follow Jalen versus everybody because Jalen thinks he doesn't have enough followers, so he's not really sharing yet. So <laughs> go, go follow, big him up. And we'll be back next time we do a pod on Friday. We'll do another IG Live story. And we're giving away T-shirts. Harlan is actually sending out about 30 today. We're actually doing it, okay? It's actually going to happen. We got another shipment coming in because we were starting running out, but we're going to get shirts out to the people that listen to the pod every day because we're giving you a dope pod of steps. Shout out. All right, Jen, I don't put too much stake in the all-star stuff. Hey, now. You know what I mean? You're like, an all-star. Uh, like, we can all argue about who should be starting and who got snubbed and, oh, Paul George should be in or, or Andre Drummond or CP3. Can I ask you a question while you tee this up? About the same topic. It's not a Darrell Reeves thing. You can ask a question. For those that don't know Darrell Reeves is, Jacoby asks whatever he wants, has an amazing rundown, mm-hmm. and I just Try talk about hard. something that yeah. has nothing you to do with it. just derail the whole show. Darrell Correct. Reeves. Um, this is not that. I was going to ask a question, however. We should pick our team on our show. I think okay. that'll be fun. Okay. Yeah. We flip for whoever's the captain or whatever. That's one. I got more votes than you. Okay. You can go first. Number two, here's what I don't like. People do this on social media. People that work in the media do this. And it really, it, it, it really, it, it really burns me up. I, I love these things that bother you. Cause there's so many things that bother you that you don't share on wax. You know what I mean? Cause I, cause there, you can, there's a lot of off wax things that you share with me. But now that you're putting this one on wax, I'm excited. Let to me hear. tell you what burns me up. What bothers you, Mr. Rose? When people talk about who should be on the team. Without taking somebody off. Without taking somebody Thank off. You. <laughs> Thank you. That's the phoniest like, thing of all, all time. All you do is sit there and talk about CP3. Like, he's had this amazing year. He's like, you know what he's done for the Rockets. And everybody counted him out. Remember, he missed those games in the beginning. And he came back. And they haven't lost a single game with him and, and Harden and Capella play. And then you're like, okay, well, let's, let's, let's look at the guards in the West then. And so let me teach everybody a media trick. Say, for example, I'm friends with Andre Drummond. Sure. Let's say you text him from time to time. Shout out. And that's my dude. Of course I'm gonna be like, he should be on the team. Of course. Did you vote for him? But let me tell you, <laughs> but let me, let, me, let me tell you what people in this industry don't do when they have those relationships. They'll put him in the game, but they don't take somebody out. No. Yeah. Of course, the same thing with Lou Williams should be an all-star. I'd be like, well, you say, yeah, well. Not in the West. No. Yeah, not in the West, you know? And by the way, the reason why we're having this conversation about people getting snubbed is Kawhi opened up a spot in the West. That's a good point. Kawhi did open up a spot. Is Kawhi really mad, Jalen? He's not happy. This is interesting. This is interesting. 
But again, that doesn't mean that he's going to walk into the greatest coach of all time's office and like stand on the table and demand a trade. But I'm pretty sure he's going to want to see some things done before he ink up again. I'll say this. Me and you aren't going to pick the teams right now. Right, because no. I know you're going to do that on Countdown. It would take up 15 minutes of this podcast, and we've got more topics to get to. But I do want to say this. When we talked about it, you said something very interesting, very interesting and astute. I was like, oh, God, of course. In one of those, like, I'm going to steal Jalen's take on this moments. When we, I was like, oh, well, LeBron will just pick James. And what would you say? If I'm LeBron James, the 30,000-point scoring Player, and this is my team in the history of the league like he's to the do captain this. Captain of the team, it's different. I am not picking a Golden State Warrior who just no. beat me in the finals and no. trolled me, and I'm not picking Kyrie Irving because if he was with the team, we wouldn't be struggling like we are. No. But you also said that he wouldn't pick James Harden. Do you remember why you said it? And if I was him, I also wouldn't pick James Harden because yo, it's so smart what you said. I'm glad you can't think of it because I'll steal it now. You're like because I want the ball. <laughs> you're like, if you're LeBron James, you're like, I don't want, I don't pick James Harden because you know James Harden's gonna do, he's gonna take the ball up. Correct. You're like, I'm LeBron James, I want the ball in my hand. Give me Anthony Davis. Correct. You know, I like that. That was smart because that's, that's the that's the thing where it's like you think you want to make the best team, but if you're LeBron, you're like, I want to make this night the best for me. I, I I felt this exact same way. Anytime I put together rec teams, I know that <laughs> I'm a ball handler, so I'm not gonna have a bunch of small guards yep. who want to handle the ball. Exactly. When I'm trying to put together a family feud team, I'm gonna put together people that I feel like are gonna win. Of course. And be clutch. Of course. You know, and have a range of versatility from Wu Tang Clan yep. to NYU. Mm hmm. So, one quick thing. Shout out. I, everyone should do this. I went through every article of clothing and gave away like, like 60, 70% of it, right? Good but for one you. thing I found, I put in the studio back there. What? I found my nameplate from Family Feud. What? That's it classic. Could be on my That's side of money. the studio. It's just in the back of the closet right there. I was so excited. That's one of the best nights of my life, and it'll be forever immortalized in the Jalen and Jacoby studio. Yeah. The Celtics have quietly lost four straight games. They Ain't lost quiet. to the we Lakers, about it. but not everyone's talking about it. You know, if the Cavs lose four straight, it's, it's leading first take every day, and they're, they're asking you to come into the studio. I enjoy being on first take. I love seeing you Shout there. Shout to Molly. You try so hard when Shout you're there. Shout to Stephen A. You research. You get Appreciate dressed up. You treat you like a real show. And here's what I told them. Yeah, if you if you could do this show in, in, in the pajamas, you would do it in pajamas. Here's why. Yeah. I say things on that show that I've already said on this show 25 and people, times. Yeah, and people notice. And people act like I just said it for the first time. We're like your little warm-up show. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> this is like a little warm-up. You can work on your takes and steal a little line from me here and there. Yes. And then by the time you get to the bigger shows, they're all rehearsed and perfect. Good for you. Yep. Good for you. KGJ got, got ejected for the fourth time this season. He's only been ejected one, one other time. Does that mean anything to you? It does mean something way too much. Ooh, what's that? Because here's the thing that you have to think about if you're the Golden State Warriors. Number one, the Rockets are coming. Yeah. Yeah. Number one. I, we all saw that game. Remember when our guy asked, are the Clippers for real? Where's the E-40 to answer that? No. Our... The Houston Rockets, for real. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. Yeah. Very much so. And so that's number one. I don't even have to get into who they are as a basketball team. No. We know. The other thing is, you don't want the rest to dislike your team. No. Mm. No. That's a good point. They're, Just like the players have a fraternity, the referees have a fraternity. A lot of no people question. They're human beings. They're being viewed and and criticized and or judged by more people than ever and they have feelings and families also yes when you curse me when you disrespect me even though we both come to work together the next day I don't forget that you did that. Nope. nope. And, and when you call me out specifically and say I have a vendetta against you to the media, guess what? Maybe if I didn't have one before you did that, well, now I do have a vendetta against you. And here's what happens. Yep. In baseball, when you run in the first play, front, first base, second base, home, first base in particular, and the shortstop picks up the baseball and he fires it over to the bag. I love where you're going with this. Who gets the tie? Goes to the runner, Mr. Rose. Correct. So, in other words, if I like you, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. Mm-hmm. 
And guess what happens in basketball? A lot of judgment calls. A lot. Oh. Yeah, people say, oh, superstar oh. calls. It's not like the refs don't oh. know who has the ball. Oh, man. They know. It's the refs' job to know how many fouls they have, the mm-hmm. score of the game, mm-hmm. to know everything. So you don't want to be the person when the tie happens, you don't get the benefit. No. That's interesting. So you think that's significant? You think this Warriors sort of like going back and forth with the refs and the media, talking about the refs, the relationship with the refs, they're not respecting us. You think that's affecting the Warriors negatively? Let me tell you. Who's my favorite team in basketball? The Detroit Pistons. We've had two iterations of teams that arguably were hated by the refs that won the championship. Yep. Obviously. The bad boy squads. And then we have Rashid, basically. And then we had Chauncey, Rip, Ben and Rashid, they led the league in techs. Yep. That's when I sat up one day with my foundation, like, where does this money go? <laughs> like, I started, I'm like, let me go. I'm like, what, where does this money go? I was like, you know what? That money needs to stay in the hood. There need to be a check presentation at the end of this year. <laughs> Rashid Wallace wing. You no doubt. You can have two high schools in Detroit before you have two. And so, but the difference is, the game was more physical then. Mm-hmm. Yep. Now, since the game isn't as physical, the judgment calls are more prevalent. Yep. W- what's a reach? How long after I shoot it? Or did, how, did I kick my legs out? Or did the defender run into me? Block charge. First quarter calls. Fourth quarter calls. Veteran calls. Rookie calls. Superstar calls. All-star calls. Of course. All that. Carries. When Kevin Durant turns his back to a defender... He carries it every single time. Yeah. We but, all know the play I'm talking about. And guess what? So does 75% in the league. Yep. Yeah, it's just an end. And it's not like when but the refs know the like people you. doing it, then they don't separate. They're not objective. They're, they're, they, if you ask them what their job is like to objectively evaluate the game between these two teams, yep. they're not objective, though. Correct. No. They know exactly who it is. It's hard to be objective if I don't like you. And I know as a ref, it's my job to be objective. But I'm going to go back to... Something that we can all relate to. A classmate, someone you work with. How about I go even closer? It could be a family member or a friend. You curse me. You're rude to me. You're disrespectful to me. Disrespectful to me. You're foul to me. The next time I see you, I'm going to remember it. We got a lot of topics, not a lot of time. Quick hits. You ready, Jalen? Let's get it. Quick hits. Number one, Dame Lillard having a meeting with the Blazers. Something or nothing? It's always something... When your all-star player meets with your billionaire owner, and we know about it. See, that's the key. Remember, we that, know about it. that meeting could have happened without us knowing. It could have happened 20 times before. They could have a, a golfing outing every Tuesday when they talk about the team. When we, we start know to now, know, that means an agent, one person somebody, is trying to send a message. Yes. And also, the meeting should go like this. You guys signed Miles Leonard, Jeff Teague, and Mo Harkless. To huge contracts, and look where that got us. Correct. Do you think CJ McCollum could get traded? No. Nope. I think uh, they've both established the level of value that if you're trying to move them, you won't get fair value in return right nope. now. That's a good point. There was a period when Dame was out, and people questioned, are, are they better without him? No. They're not better without no. him. They're not. You're not better without Dame Lillard. No one's better without Dame Lillard. Correct. So I think what they need is more help at the forward spot. Yes. That's where they've lacked. Yes. Consistent productivity. They got a lot of people there that have flashes, like Myers Leonard and Aminu and and, and Harkless and and Jokic. Like a lot of players, you're like, you can watch a game and be like, wow, they've turned the corner. And then you watch another game and be like, oh, they are very much just a a rotation rotation player. That's who they are. Really quickly, this is, I have to share something that happened to me, Jalen. I didn't tell you yet. Right outside of your crib, mm-hmm. downtown Los Angeles, uh huh. Not by your crib, but around that in the in the neighborhood. My bike got stolen. Stop it. My bike got stolen. My ride or die road dog. Bike. That's what we should have did at the beginning of the pod. My we need to do got, a juju juju. My bike got stolen, Jalen. 
I've had this singular bike, the longest I've ever had one bike, because I don't spend a lot on bikes because they always get stolen, because I live in New York and bikes get stolen all the time. Yep. So I don't spend a lot of money on my bikes. But this one has been with me. I've had its tires been stolen, its seats been stolen. This Why has been with me for you five say years. Anything? We should have did a what juju you mean, say type thing. And put an APB out for no, it. No, because that makes me look thirsty. To get it back. No, you don't know about ten. You don't know about Tent City in downtown Los Angeles. <laughs> Skid Row. It's, that bike got swallowed by Skid Row, <laughs> and we ain't never gonna find it. And I would never want somebody to go try looking for it. It's Skid a Row. shame what happened to Flip. It's a shame what happened to that, to that bicycle. <laughs> but man, I miss that bike so much. And when I walked outside, I always lock it on the same sign, the same place. It's been there so many times. I gotta get a new bike, Jay. I might shed a tear after this. It makes me so disappoint. sad. I'm disappointed. I was thinking about all the miles, everything that we've been through. Me and that bicycle have been hit by cars Accidents. a couple times. How many times I had to spend? I bought, I spent 500 to buy the bike. What? I've probably put another thousand dollars into it since then. How many times what? has that bike heard you slander my name? Oh, Maybe I spent, 100, I spent most, times. most of my 20 minute commute just mumbling to myself, Correct. complaining about you. Cause that's you. when you come into and from work. I and know. I work with you. Oh, I know. And you're doing all of the work I for know. the show. I'm so that was like bike. somebody losing a pet. I hope my new bike doesn't mind listening to me complain about you. <laughs> but bikes, I didn't know this. Bikes are kind of like furniture. Like it does take a while to come. Like I, I gotta go like go buy the bike and then they're like, alright, we'll call you in two weeks. Like no, I, I want a bike. What? Two weeks. So rich. Let's end this on a good, what? on a good <clears throat> note. There's a girl at a university, and he saw someone named Claudia on Tinder. And you and me don't do dating apps. Nope. But basically, you swipe right or left, and if you swipe a no on them, they disappear forever. He accidentally swiped no on Claudia. So he emailed every single Claudia in the university dating base, found the original Claudia, and they're going out together. Boss move. Boss move? Isn't that a little creepy, though? Isn't that a little creepy? If you're Claudia, here's what she's definitely going on the date, but she's also telling her friend, like, I'm gonna text you every 10 minutes. If you don't get a text me in 10 minutes, call the police. Here's a theory in life that can never be lost. If you want something, go after it. Preach. Squeaky wheel gets the oil. Preach. Squeaky wheel gets the oil. There's a lot of things that I wish I spoke up about, a lot of opportunities that I was just a little too scared to try to, to grab, and it can't change it now. And there's nothing in life. Like having a good woman in your corner. I end it with that because I've got the best woman in my corner. Big shout out to Joey, Jacoby, and the legend Molly Karam. Shout out. We'll be back on Friday with a dope pod to step to. We're not done. We're not done. We're not done. I'm a robot vacuum cleaner, so yeah, I got one gig. I suck up dirt. So pardon my inferiority complex about Geico, who does so much more. Like, not only could they save their customers money on car insurance, but they got fast and friendly claim service, too. And an award-winning mobile app. Plus access to licensed agents 24-7. Who am I kidding? I can't even do corners. Uh-oh. Choking hazard. <gasps> Popcorn girdles. Geico. Expect great savings and a whole lot more.